Welcome to the Wittes Maintainer Talk. My name is Deepti Sigredi. I'm the technical lead for the Wittes Open Source Project, and I'm the Wittes Engineering Lead at PlanetScale. I'm Derek Perkins, CEO of Nozzle. And my name is Sudhi, and I'm from Backblaze. Today we'll start with a Wittes overview that Derek will give us, and then Sudhi will talk about production deployment of Wittes at Backblaze. Then I'll come back to talk about new and upcoming features in Wittes, and then we'll do a Q&A if there are any questions at that point. So Vitess, why would you choose to run Vitess? Obviously, sharding is the number one feature that people think about when they think about Vitess. And let's talk about what are the problems you're facing with your existing MySQL setup that might make you think, oh, sharding, Vitess might be a solution. First, backup restore times for your disaster recovery. Uh, the bigger your disk, the longer physics requires for you to move that data around uh, and do the whole backup process. Write contention uh, is important to deal with. Deadlocks is a related uh, problem that you'll be facing as you have more and more writers. Uh, the C Despite how many CPUs you scale it to, you're going to be limited by uh, table contention. Uh, IOPS, especially if you're on the cloud, uh, you're going to be limited with the number of IOPS writing to your disks. And one of the first things that you're going to do to offload some of your uh, load is to start adding read replicas, which brings up a couple of issues. Uh, depend the more you're writing, the harder it is for replication to keep up. MySQL's made some strides recently to enable some better parallel writing, um, but it still generally is a lot slower than uh, writing to your primary. And then eventual consistency. For me, this is one of the biggest concerns that I see database-wise around is because once you start moving to a read replica, now every single app developer that you have has to understand eventual consistency. And distributed systems are difficult. And so, but again, if you're trying to scale that single node MySQL, read replicas is kind of the only thing you can do. And then finally, you're going to eventually hit uh, max instance size, and so it's not gonna scale forever. And the way that Vitess helps you with each of these uh, fixed disk sizes. Uh, Vitesse, we recommend that you do about 250 gigabytes per shard. Not because that's a magic number, but that kind of gets you into a 15 minute restore window uh, for disaster recovery. Just having multiple disks helps you with all three of these. You're writing to the same schema, uh, but different uh, disks solves, again, most of these. Replication lag, because again, you have multiple instances of MySQL running. The parallel workers makes replication lag not an issue. And this is my favorite. Uh, rather than having one primary and 10 or 100 read replicas, just shard wider. Get 50 primaries with one replica each for uh, HA and disaster recovery. And to me, that's just a no-brainer offload that hard work from your app developers. And then obviously, max instance size, you get solved with the horizontal scaling. But besides just sharding, Vitesse is a full database platform. So day two operations, a lot of people immediately want to go to an uh, RDS or Cloud SQL on Google uh, to handle just some simple things that are vital to your business, high availability, Automatic failovers, that's all handled natively by Vitesse. Um, if any of you are running MySQL in production at scale, you probably have used or are using Orchestrator. And essentially the next version, the originator of, of Orchestrator now works at planet scale as one of the Vitesse maintainers. And because Vitesse has a data plane, it's able to do things that the original uh, just didn't have the data to do. So as it's continued to evolve at Vitesse, Orchestrator is a, a great way to handle this. Backup restores included, uh, whether that's to disk, whether that's to 
uh, object storage uh, that's built in. You get connection pooling. It'll scale up forever. Um, one question people often ask about Vitesse is what's the overhead? And typically we say there's a kind of one to two millisecond latency that's going to get added to every call, but that's fixed. No matter how wide you shard, you're going to have that fixed uh, penalty that as long as you're not expecting sub-millisecond times and your whole architecture is predicated on that, everything else is going to uh, scale forever. Online schema changes. There's you know, multiple things uh, in the ecosystem, PT, OSC, uh, Ghost. Uh, Vitesse supports those, but there's also internal uh, V replication features uh, that enable that, plus more automated rollbacks uh, in case of errors. It's pretty awesome. Uh, if you've ever touched planet scales uh, branching, that's all powered by uh, the same V replication uh, work. Query consolidation to prevent thundering herds uh, as you get a more active database. Uh, if there's an in-flight from between the proxy and the actual MySQL instance, you can have the same MySQL query return to any callers asking for the same data. And then finally, uh, this is just another implementation of the, that V replication feature, and VStream is the underlying primitive that powers all of that. Uh, you can also do materialized views. A uh, cool feature that we use that for is, uh, and I'll talk about in a second, messaging, but we will use it as an event stream to power uh, messaging queues later down. Uh, VStream can also be used for distributed uh, CDC if you want to move your data into OLAP or something. So lots of things that make operating your database great. Deployment, Kubernetes native from the beginning. Uh, it was, came out of YouTube, it ran on Borg, so it was built to be on a stateless uh, type of system. Borg didn't, at, to my knowledge, uh, I'm not a Google ex-Googler, but uh, didn't even have the concept of like a stateful set. And so it was, things could get wiped and it knew how to handle that. So Kubernetes is a walk in the park with uh, stateful. There's an operator available, uh, GitHub planet scale operator. And, but Kubernetes is not required. Uh, Sudi will talk a little bit about it at Backblaze. Um, but there's plenty of people uh, running it not on Kubernetes, including, I believe, Slack. So messaging, my personal favorite uh, feature that is probably the most hidden feature out of the test. Right, this works just like SQS or PubSub if you're used to that. It's just a native MySQL table, a couple of required columns uh, that the test needs for it. You can use it with a simple stream star from message table, and that is just going to stream rows into your worker. It scales with your data. If you're running Kafka, if you're running RabbitMQ, you're running whatever other, you know, Redis, as you're scaling it up, you now have two separate things. Is my queue going to be able to support whatever data scale and operations that my database, or is my database a bottleneck? And here, most of the time, your message is going to live next to your data, and so you only have to scale the one thing, which also enables you can just join with regular tables. So you don't necessarily have to copy your payload into SQS or PubSub and pay uh, extra for that. The fact that you can just populate it and observe it with SQL is just, it is so great. I don't have to write code if I want to know what is sitting in my queue. Oh, select from, right? We all know and love it. And then finally, transactions is the best. There's no outbox feature, you know, outbox pattern. You can just say, act this message, do some data work, pass it on to an next queue, in a single uh, database transaction and just let MySQL handle that for you. It is amazing if you've never used it. Um, and you probably haven't, because most people don't think that messaging queues can scale uh, without going to Kafka. Compatibility, uh, Vitesse is a project. We've put a ton of work into making sure that it works with all of the frameworks that you uh, use. There are gonna be, uh, if there's some more advanced SQL features, there are a handful that are not currently supported, uh, but we're always improving compatibility and generally most of your workloads are just gonna function correctly. And I'll do a quick dive into the architecture. I'm not gonna go super deep. There have been a lot of uh, different talks about that in the past. 
Um, but at, at a high level, your application is talking to uh, VTGate that's just a stateless proxy, and it presents itself as a unified singular MySQL database. And then it chooses based on sharding rules, like a common one is tenant ID, and based on that tenant ID, it will send you to the right uh, shard that underneath it has a sidecar to just a, a regular MySQL instance, a VT tablet, uh, that man maintains a persistent connection pool. That's where the things like uh, query consolidation, all that happens. Then outside of the regular query flow is the control plane. You have VT admin, that is the UI. VT control D is the core that manages uh, everything that lives in a topology server, typically at CD, uh, but also Zookeeper, and I believe console is deprecated. And then finally, VT Orc is what I was talking about with the next evolution of uh, Orchestrator. And again, because it has a topology server and it knows exactly what the, topo what the MySQL layout and topology is supposed to be, it can do a better job of maintaining it versus just listening for breaks and trying to do its best. And yeah, as you dive into each shard, again, uh, at that VT gate, you'll define in a JSON what your V schema is what it's called, and you say shard by this, you can give it a sharding function. Most people use a hash on like a tenant ID, and it sends it to the correct shard. Uh, and again, this is just a, a zoom in on the control plane. So additional learning, uh, like I mentioned, there's a lot of resources out there. This is probably the best, it's a singular course uh, to dive into all the pieces of Vitesse uh, at planet scale. There's on the Vitesse site itself, there are learning resources. Uh, a lot of them are just talks that have been given. Uh, Deep Thea in particular is given probably half of them uh, as the team lead across various cube cons and other conferences. And then finally, we're very active in Slack, so we would love for you to come join us. Uh, all of us are there. Feel free to hit us up. And Vitesse is in production at the biggest companies uh, that there are. Every issue and pull request in GitHub, along with almost everything else, goes through Vitesse. Uh, none of the outages are Vitesse related, to my knowledge. Um, so don't put that on us. Uh, Square Cash, every uh, transaction goes through Vitesse and has for a while. So the biggest uh, companies are using it at scales that it's just not going to break. So Vitesse is battle hardened. It's just native MySQL under the hood. It's awesome. Thank you very much. Thanks, Eric. My name is Sudhi, and in this section, I'm going to give you a brief overview of how we went from testing with us and going live with it in production. Yeah, sorry. Uh, this is the mandatory slide that I was given by my marketing department, uh, and I have to mention it. Uh, the one thing that I would highlight is uh, a lot of our customers are moving from S3 and into Backblaze and have seen a significant reduction in their infrastructure costs. So, and also, in the community, I think a lot of folks know us for our drive stats report that gets published every quarter because you can pretty much imagine every manufactured drive out there, we would have run it. So, uh, we have those reports. And the recent one was pretty couple of days ago. Now, before I get into how we got into production, I'm going to talk a brief moment of uh, the application that actually went live with Vitesse. Um, and the name is Deletion Queue. And as the name suggests, the primary job of this application is to perform deletes. Right? Simple enough. <laughs> uh, but if you start peeling the layers, you'll know that it is nothing simple, but <laughs> gets complex really fast. Turns out, IOPS is a very precious thing for us. And there's only a limited amount of IOPS that you can get from the drive. So we constantly struggle to find the balance of dedicating the IOPS either for deletion or for other activities that can be performed on the drives. This constant battle uh, means that our backlogs of deletions just keeps on increasing. 
So for a long period of time, we never used a database for it, right? Duh. It would have been a, such a simple, quick lookup. And that's when we decided, OK, we're going to use a database. But as Derek mentioned, we didn't want to go through all the pains of a single monolith database. So we decided that we're going to have a Vitesse sharded database for it. In fact, this application went live just three weeks ago. And it's hot off the press. <laughs> we are already seeing 8 to 10x benefit in terms of our deletion rates. Now, because it's a database lookup for deletions, we free, uh, free up uh, a lot of IOPS that can be now dedicated to other operations like uploads, which increased our upload time, uh, which increased the benefit of faster uploads. Our queues are much manageable now, and because they are manageable, we don't have to add constant storage to our pods. So we save tons of money by not adding additional storage. Why? Because we didn't reclaim the f space that was used by the files that were deleted. So this is a success story of Vitesse. A couple of other points, which I'll get to it if I have time. <laughs> uh, once we decided that we want to go with Vitesse as our database, uh, we had to decide on what platform are we going to use. Unfortunately, at that time, Kubernetes was not ready for us to go into production. So we went with a bare metal system and with this kind of a config for it. And we had to find out what type of load can these nodes support. So we used regular standard sysbench, modified it to run against a Vitess sharded database. And we saw about 125K plus QPS that we can safely accommodate on each of these nodes. So that was a very promising feature for us. And it meets our needs. So we went with that. In terms of architecture, we didn't want to complicate too much. So we just followed what you find on Vitesse documentation and with a minor set of tweaks. So I'm not going to go over each and individual component of here, just the tweaks that we did for the architecture that we find on Vitesse documentation sites. For our control plane, uh, Vitesse control plane, we used HCD as our topology server. And we went with a five node configuration for it. The reason is we can have two nodes fail at a time and still maintain quorum for HCD and function. And when you have five nodes as your topology server, Vitesse configuration can get really messy where we have to specify the topology server address. So we said, let's simplify this by adding a whip in front of it. So we have one simple whip which hits the available HCD nodes, and that makes our configurations much more simple to handle. All additional Vitesse admin components run on node one to begin with. And if there is, for some reason, we lose node number one, we can always spawn it off on any other surviving nodes. So this was the tweak that we made for the topology service that we have. Uh, moving on to the other components, uh, we introduced, uh, because load balancer sits in a critical query serving path, we couldn't just go with one load balancer, so we wanted HA for it. So we went with two load balancers, and the load balancers that we have are based on um, Keep Alive D, and they work in an active passive fashion. Their job was just to route client requests to the available VT gates, and an additional job that we gave for them because they were hardly burdened with anything. So we have VIP servicing the control plane too. So they service the WIP for the clients as well as other Vitesse components, which talks to the topology server. And for the gates, again, we have two VT gates just to make sure that we have HA available. And if, uh, if we see the need for adding additional VT gates because some of them became overloaded, we can just add it to our pool. This combination of load balancers and VT gates is per key space for the Vitesse cluster. So we are designing it as a platform. And every key space that comes along to that or gets onboarded onto that platform will come with its own set of load balancers and VT gates. This is to ensure that we maintain isolation between the key spaces and not step on each other's foot. In terms of shard, a minimum of three nodes, one pri acting as primary and two of them as replicas. So this is a very standard basic configuration that we have. And if there is ever a need 
that we have run out of uh, servicing read requests from the replicas, we can always add more replicas to it. Oops. I am so sorry. This tells you how much experience I have with Google presentations. OK, now once we decided on the architecture and how we want to go about it, the first thing that we did for tweaking is convert every service that we have as a systemd service. So we can start utilizing the benefits of systemd units. Uh, because our presence is in multiple data centers, we went with a single cell with test configuration per data center. So all these things get deployed through Ansible, and we have cookbooks to uh, pretty much uh, run and configure an entire site within minutes. For day-to-day -day operations, we scrape metrics from the node, from Vitesse and MySQL using Prometheus. We use Grafana to beautifully display those in nice dashboards, and a combination of Zabbix and Grafana for alerting purposes. We're just keeping it pretty simple, right? Nothing different. Now, that was our existing setup, right? Uh, in fact, I'll take just one second yeah. to mention the power of system D, right? Uh, because we converted that, we had our first incident today morning. And uh, there was no intervention by any user. And VT Orchestrator, which Derek mentioned quite a lot about, automatically failed over the available replica, converted it to a primary, and it was detected after the fact. Like, the alert was raised, but by the time the on-call could get to it, everything was taken care of. So that's the power of some of the Vitesse features. Now, where do we go from here? Of course, we want to be on Kubernetes, and it is pretty close to being production ready for us. So once it is done, we will port our stuff from bare metal to Kubernetes uh, ecosystem. And uh, because we are a very small team, there's a lot of operational tasks that we can automate. We are in the process of automating everything, including resharding. So this becomes as a stepping stone to have as a true database as a service platform for our internal customers. And eventually, we want folks who have no knowledge of a test or database to perform resharding operations with the push of a button. So that's where we're going to head to. And with that, I thank you all for coming for my brief uh, overview of how we went to production and hand it over to Deepthi to talk about new and upcoming services. All right. So uh, when we do these talks, we tr always try to do an introduction, but also have something for the more advanced users of Vitesse. And much of that revolves around what is new and what is upcoming. Uh, query serving is the area in which we probably see the most amount of activity in terms of feature requests and uh, issues and things like that. And we also tend to spend a lot of time uh, and effort in that area. So in the most recent GA release, which went out, I think, on October 29th, so just about two weeks ago, we have uh, support for atomic distributed transactions. So Vitus already does distributed transactions on a best effort basis. What this does is that distributed transactions can actually be atomic across multiple shards. Derek will tell you that you don't need distributed transactions, but there are people who want them for whatever reason, and we want to enable those kinds of users as well. This is experimental. As issues come up, we'll fix them, and hopefully someone will go into production soon. Um, we've also added support for recursive CTEs. We've revamped our benchmarking website, which, where we run uh, benchmarks on a daily basis and publish them, benchmark.vitus.io, if you didn't know. We have many more uh, uh, query compatibility improvements that went into the last two releases, 20 and 21, uh, improvements to updates, deletes, more syntax that is supported. And we've also added a bunch of metrics for query plan, cache, hits, and misses. Moving on to vReplication. vReplication is the engine that powers all the resharding and also vStream and materialized views. 
when people import their data into Vitus, they are also using vReplication to do that. So this is really at the heart of many of the uh, scalability features that Vitus provides. Uh, we've added a new feature to mirror traffic during migration so that when you cut over after a migration, your MySQLs are not cold. All the buffers have been warmed because you've been sending a small percentage of your read traffic already to, to the cluster you're migrating into. Uh, reference tables is a nice feature in Vitus where you may have these small tables where you have things like countries, currencies, zip codes. You don't want to shard them, you don't need to shard them. You can materialize them into every one of your shards so that joins are local versus going cross shard. So we've added uh, a CLI command that makes it much easier to use this feature that has been there for a long time. Workflows can now uh, accept dynamic configuration. Previously, you had to configure the workflow when you created it, and that's it. But now, while the workflow is running, you can change some of the parameters. Maybe you want to throttle it. Maybe you want to uh, add a table to your migration that you forgot to add. All those things are now possible. We've also added experimental support for multi-tenant imports. A lot of people run uh, SaaS services, and by definition, they are multi-tenant because you have many users, and you want each of them to have their own little domain of data. Uh, but when such databases try to migrate to uh, Vitesse, oftentimes they have difficulty doing that because maybe they have split their tenants across many individual databases, and they have hundreds or thousands of them. How do you migrate hundreds or thousands of smallish databases into this big sharded uh, MySQL cluster? So we've added workflows to enable that. We have a new workflow creation and management UI as part of VT Admin. Until we did this, VT Admin was mostly read-only as far as workflows went, even though you had other management features like electing a new primary tablet. Now uh, workflows can be created from the UI, managed from the UI. Uh, we have um, a few other improvements to vReplication in terms of error handling and vStream enhancements. Online DDL, also known as online schema changes. This is one of the marquee features of Vitus. This is something that had been a pain for the MySQL community for a long time, and as Derek already mentioned, people came up with their own tools for doing uh, online schema changes. Percona had online schema change tool. Uh, Ghost, which is GitHub's online schema change tool. Uh, in Vitus, with vReplication, we can natively provide uh, online schema changes which will not take your database down. And we, we keep adding features to this. Online DDL as a feature has been around for almost four years now and we keep making constant improvements. We add features, for example, MySQL now has instant DDL, so if it's possible to do instant DDL. For instance, you are adding a new column to a table, the column is gonna be empty, there's no data in it, that can be instant. So wherever possible, we do them instantly. And we've also done improvements to how you can throttle these workflows because sometimes the workflow that is doing the online schema change, because it makes a copy of the table and then switches over to the shadow table, the new table, it can affect your, uh, your query serving. Your regular queries might become slow if the online schema change workflow is causing too much load on the database. So it's possible to throttle it and make it take a little longer so that your regular workloads are not affected. Uh, we've also made error handling improvements, usability improvements, and improvements to schema diff, which is a feature in online DDL through which you can do declarative DDL. You just say, this is the schema definition I want, and we will compute the diff and apply it. We've also made uh, some improvements to backups and VT Orc. MySQL backups is a feature that was contributed by Slack. This is experimental. So uh, the built-in MySQL shell backup feature can be used with Vitesse now. Uh, we've added metrics to VT Orc in order to uh, view errant 
uh, transactions because this does happen sometimes with MySQL that you end up with an errant transaction on a replica. You can now uh, see those through metrics. We've made it easier to configure unmanaged mode. Unmanaged mode is what people use when they are initially migrating to Vitus. So you have your MySQL, you put a thin layer of Vitus in front of it, and then you use that as the proxy to copy everything over to your real Vitus cluster while still serving traffic. So you're serving traffic to your original cluster, and by putting this Vitus facade in front of it, you can actually do an almost zero downtime cutover to your newly migrated Vitus cluster. So that's unmanaged mode. And previously, it was very difficult to configure it with a few flags here, a few flags there. Now there is one flag called unmanaged, which takes care of everything. And uh, one of the improvements we've made to VT Orc is to allow cross-cell planned failovers. Previously, a planned failover had to stay within the same cell. Cell is a Vitus concept which refers to a failure domain. So it could be a data center, it could be a zone in, um, in a cloud provider, or it could be a single rack in a data center. So previously, when you did a planned failover for maintenance purposes and chose a new primary, it would have to live in the same cell, but we have many people who actually run only one replica per availability zone. So you deploy your Vitus across, say, three availability zones in a cloud provider, primary, replica, replica. You want to be able to fail over to another zone if you want to take the primary down for maintenance. So now that's uh, supported. We also have a Kubernetes operator for Vitus, and we've made a bunch of improvements to it. Uh, you've always been able to trigger backups while running Vitus with the operator. Now they are automated and scheduled. You don't have to define a Kubernetes job to do it. Uh, you just specify a property in the CRD, and the backups will happen. Uh, we've added horizontal auto-scaling to VTGate um, so that as your traffic goes up, you can actually scale automatically without having to do it manually. We are up to the latest release of Kubernetes 1.31, and we've also added image customization so that different uh, parts of the cluster can actually be run using uh, different images. A little bit about upcoming features. We have some performance optimizations queued up. Performance is something that cannot be done one time. You have to periodically revisit it because as you keep adding features and refactoring code, you may end up with regressions. And as far as query performance goes, we actually do monitor it on a nightly basis. We uh, always r run our benchmarks before every release and compare them with the previous release and make sure there are no significant regressions. But there's always room for improvement, so that's going to be a focus for the next couple of releases. We also want to do much better monitoring of workflows in order to make sure that your resharding or online DDL are not adversely affecting your regular query serving uh, workloads, so that will be upcoming. And we are also planning to add vSchema decision support. When you decide to shard your tables in Vitess, you have to choose which column you're going to use as the sharding key. And sometimes it can be a composite sharding key. And the, it's not very easy to do that. It requires a deep knowledge of your schema and your workload. We want to make that easier by surfacing insights out of your already running workloads and help people make, make these decisions much easier. We have about a minute left for questions, but um, you can visit our website using, well, actually, this is the feedback QR code. So any feedback on the session, please let us know. And the website is vitus.io. Any questions? OK. If there are no questions, we are done. Thank you for showing up.